Welcome back to the Angels here on OTP 25. It has been a few days for me. I usually don't like to cut my recording sessions in half like that in the middle of a season. Uh, usually if I'm going to sit down and record OTP, I like to make sure I get through at least one season. And then I'll usually like leave it off at the start of the off season because it's easier to like if it's harder to cut off in the middle of the season, then come back and be like, all right, we're in July. What happened? Uh, as opposed to, you know, coming out in the off season, and it's easier to like evaluate where things are at because you're at like the starting point of changing everything essentially. Uh, but you know, I forget what what happened, but something happened. I, I had to cut it short in the middle of the season, and then it was more. It was Memorial Day weekend, so I was not recording OTP. I was doing other stuff. You know, like like drinking a lot of beer. You know. Not me. I don't actually drink, but, you know, closest I come to drinking is listening to the Hangover game by MJ Lenderman. But that is not the point. The point is that it's been a few days. We're back here on OTP. As you can see, things are not going well here for our Anaheim or Los Angeles Angels. Uh, 42 and 53. It's, it's just been bad. And, I mean, I guess you could say I've overlooked some things on this team, but, I mean, I feel like we addressed some things in the offseason. If we take a look at expanding standings, we're, we're negative 10 in run differential. So if we take it just by run differential, we're not as bad as the Astros and the Rangers, and we are minus 4 on the Pythagorean. So that does make sense, uh, at least a little bit. Uh just, I mean, but even then, we're not a good team. It's not like our Pythagorean saying that we should be like a contender. Our Pythagorean saying that we should still be bad. Uh, it's just not been good. And I decided to, one thing I do know is why I left off recording is because we just got to this all-star team reveal and Brandon Woodruff is out for two months. He has uh, been okay-ish for a guy who is at this point in his career where he's like, 36 halfway to 37 uh he's basically just kind of like a control guy at this point he doesn't have the white bat stuff anymore he's throwing under he's throwing sub 90 he's throwing 80 poo out there it's not great uh but you know two months for him with the forearm inflammation we do have him for one more season with a player option i would i would think that he's probably going to opt into that because i don't think he would get more than 15 million on the market so he's probably going to opt into 15 million which isn't the end of the world we are a los angeles based team or at least a los angeles named team with a decent budget so it's not going to end of the world if we have woodruff on the team next year maybe in the bullpen is like a multi-inning sort of guy uh, doing the spore strategy of getting the multi-inning guys in there. It's, I don't know why I'm calling it spore strategy. I do that too. It's not just your thing, spore. I don't claim it. I don't know why I'm getting aggressive here, but I love spore. Spore is great. Check out his videos if you haven't. Uh, I've been shouting him out like nonstop, I feel like, but you know, I've been watching OTP stuff, and mainly the OTP guys I watch are spore and PF Holden. They're the, they're the, they're the top tier out there, in my opinion. But anyways... Not the end of the world. We have to have him on the team at 15.2 next year. We could probably even eat that if we wanted to and just kind of pay him to not be on the team. I doubt we would do that. We would at least give him a shot to start the year on the team. But, uh, you know, still not great. He's out for two months here. Uh, and that was what I do remember uh, what we left off on last time. But overall, just the, the team is not going well. Uh, the We're 10th in runs scored. I mean, 13th in hits, 8th in home runs. We are walking a ton, not striking out a lot, stealing a ton of bags, not getting a lot of value on the base running, though. But we are stealing a ton, walking a ton, and not striking out a lot. And then we just don't score runs. We don't get hits. We don't score runs. And the pitching has been pretty decent, I would say. We're 7th in runs a lot, which definitely needs improving. I would say that's probably because we're walking way too many guys. But everything else in here, like, I'm fine with. Like, we're solid defensively. We strike out a lot of guys. We give up too many home runs. We give up too many walks. That's really our, our Achilles heel here, as it is with a lot of teams uh, in baseball. But, I mean, we're like, we're low on the BABIP. We have the least amount of hits and the lowest opponent's average. Uh, the bullpen ERA has been decent. Fifth, I'll take that. Eighth starters. The starters have been has been rough. But that, that is one thing that we wanted to change in this offseason. I felt like we did that by bringing in Gallon and Senga. And Senga hasn't been great uh, with the ERA, which is what that stat was we were looking at. Uh, it's, it hasn't been good. You know, he's obviously older, but he was coming off multiple productive seasons. So I was like, this guy 
should still be good. Uh, and he hasn't been awful, but he hasn't been like number two guy in the rotation type stuff. Zach Gallen hasn't been awful either. He's been quite good, but he hasn't been like six war, five and a half war type guy putting up 200 innings sort of pitcher for us. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's just fine, I would say. Uh, we're, obviously, we're not regretting signing him, but it is something that is uh, contributing to our pitching staff here is that Zach Gallon's not putting up like six war for us. And then obviously Woodruff, the fall off from him didn't help. Reed Detmers has actually been really good for us with the ERA. 133 ERA plus. He's had an interesting bounce back year as we uh, have him. Uh, we could bring him back next year. We could not. We'll, we'll obviously evaluate that in the offseason. We might even trade him now, honestly. We'll see because we are out of it. Uh, and we're probably going to be making some trades here at the deadline. We're not going to be blowing up the whole team, obviously. But if we have some guys like Detmers who could net us like some possible younger, useful pieces, uh, I would not be opposed to doing that. Uh, and then like... Edward Cabrera is up from AAA. He uh, has not been good. He has 11 starts here in the big leagues. Just not great. 77 ERA plus, 122 fit minus, bad both ways. The K minus walk has not been good. We basically just gave him a shot because uh, he has had a track record of being a good pitcher. I believe I went over this in, this la in the last episode, but he, he put up two really, really good years in Colorado. You're putting up this type of war, this type of ERA plus, and this type of fit minus in Colorado? Like, I mean, you got to roll a dice on a guy like that. You know, it's obviously a few years away from uh, now. We're in 2029. This was 20, uh, 25 and 26 that he was doing this. But I mean, still. You know, it wasn't like he was awful in 2027. In 2028, he was mainly with Tampa. He wasn't awful, but he's been awful with us. So, uh, of course, that's how it's been going. Not that, like, Edward Cabrera is, like, the, the needle mover here for this team. Uh, but, yeah, the pitching just hasn't been good. The bullpen, like I said, has been uh, decent for us. We've got, like, Jose Lopez and Ben Joyce in the stopper. They've actually been quite solid. If we sort by innings here. Uh, ben Joyce has 70 and two-thirds innings. He's been solid with the ERA and the fit minus. You can see a 69, nice fit minus, very good. 23.9 uh, K minus walk. We sort by this. Him, Healy has been good in the bullpen in this like middle relief, use more often specialist role. Uh, Soriano has been good as, he, as we brought him back. Uh, Aaron Ashby, we claimed off waivers uh, on June 6th. Or no, we, we signed him as a minor league signing on June 6th. He was in AAA for two games for us. Uh, and then we ended up calling up at one point. He's been fine. He's been, you know, fine. Uh, we signed him just because we wanted another lefty in the pen. And I didn't feel like we had a lefty that we wanted to call up. So uh, Ashby's been up doing his thing with a decent K-minus walk. Uh, Jose Lopez, not the best K-minus walk, but he's got a decent uh, year for us. Once again, this guy just keeps putting up good years in the bullpen for us. Uh, just out of nowhere. I mean, where did this guy even come from? He was an international free agent by the Rays. Then he got... Sh what? International free... And then he was... Oh, okay, he was a Rule 5 guy to, pop to the Padres in 2022. Returned to the Rays. Released by the Rays. Signed by the Rays. <laughs> Uh, granted free agency, uh, then he went to Indie Ball, I guess, in our league. I think that's what the ATL is. Whoops, I did not mean to back out like that. Uh, then he was released by the Hagerstown Flying Boxcars, signed with the Cubs, then went to free agency, then went back to the Padres, they released him, then back to the Cubs, they, uh, didn't bring him back. We signed him. Once again, I keep misclicking, I keep, like, spazzing out and hitting right click. Uh, they released him, and or they didn't bring him back, and then we signed him to a one-year deal, and we just, he immediately wins the World Series with us as a member of our bullpen, and then he just keeps being solid for us. So Jose Lopez here, just kind of out of nowhere, but uh, has been a very solid lefty arm for us. Uh, but obviously, a lefty bullpen arm is not going to be a uh, total needle mover for your team here. But still, the bullpen has not been the issue. It has been... Uh, the starting staff and the bats, and and the bats obviously uh, it's it's disappointing because if we sort by war here, we have th uh, a bunch of guys who are like around two war. I would say we got like Shanuel who's still hitting. Oh, Hoppy's having a down year. Uh, he's basically just kind of like treading water. He's he's kind of like Arenado in real life right now, where he's he's like league average ish hitter, 
uh but he's not putting up like what he should be doing here where he's you know he's putting up these types of wrc pluses uh these like 30 close to 40 home run type seasons ops is down into the 700s it's not great it's not great folks uh hopefully this isn't the sign of something to come and it's just like a down year but uh it, it's definitely played into it and then Juan Soto, the war is low because he is a DH, but he's he's not putting up like these type numbers, but he's putting up a good enough season. He, he's not hitting doubles, though. His home runs are a little bit low, and his OPS is a little bit low. So, like, obviously we would want more. His BABIP is much lower than it has been, at least uh, in the past two seasons. He did have a 251 in 2026. So, you know, maybe uh, things can change a bit, but, uh, you know... Uh, hopefully he's not uh, gonna de de he's not gonna get worse a lot I should say uh, hopefully he's gonna be a you know I'm, I'm not expecting him to put like 177 WRC pluses but hopefully he does a little bit more for us not that we're paying him like too too much but like we we, we did keep him under 40 we have him through his age 37 or 36 season if he opts into both of these uh, which is fine but uh, you know it's it's been it's been disappointing how our bats haven't performed. Neto's having a down year at the plate. George Lumbar's been like fine. Kyron Paris has had a down year at the plate. Uh, Bob Moore has been like fine as a bench guy. Uh, and this has been a development. Harrison Didawick, we called him up once again. I don't know why he keeps giving these mustaches to dudes, but Harrison Didawick, uh, he comes up and he has been quite good for us here in the big leagues uh only 55 plate appearances but he came up and he's been solid you know he's got seven home runs one double in uh in 16 games uh and he's striking out a ton obviously this is not going to sustain with this type of strikeout rate uh the bat isn't too too high but uh you know i would say it's he's not a 205 wrc hitter wrc plus guy uh, but he is up because we just haven't had any production at that left field spot. If we take a look, sort this by outfield, uh, Randy DeJesus is up because right now we've got uh, DeJesus playing against righties with Didawick every second game. And then against lefties, it's just DeJesus because Didawick is a left-handed hitter. Uh, and DeJesus here, he just hasn't been good, you know? The showman came up. He was the pinch hitter for us in the, in the World Series winning season. He had the great playoffs, and he just hasn't ever really shown that he should be like a dude in the big league. I guess in 2028, he had a 38 home run season. And in 2029, he uh, is just hasn't, he hasn't produced in the big leagues. We've been giving him a shot, but he's not doing it. Uh, we're probably going to keep running him and Didawick and left. And then we also called up Mike Broyhill, who's playing right field for us right now, because we do have a couple injuries here if we go to the injured list. Uh, Griffin Canning, I think we knew about that. Uh, yeah, we knew about that. Uh, Wenseal Perez was up. He got hurt. I keep accidentally right, misclicking right trigger or right click. Uh, he came up for a bit. He was not good. He got hurt. Nelson Rada was the big one where he went down with two to three months. He was not performing. He's just consistently going down on the WRC pluses here. And he was not performing, which is definitely a bummer to see here. But, uh, you know, he got hurt. That's definitely a big blow to our lineup here. He's a guy who we kind of rely on, but we probably shouldn't be at this point, even though he is, you know, he's still young. You know, he still looks like he should be decent. But, uh, you know, we'll have to see how, how things play out with him. But right now we don't have him, so that is why our outfield situation is looking a bit different, where we've got Mike Broyhill up because he got a decent boost in scouting, I believe. I keep clicking on the wrong things. Uh, scouting, yeah, he's just been plus, 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 plus. Everywhere you look, it's just plus, 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 plus. Uh, and he's been developing. He's got a decent looking profile, a lot of green, a little bit of blue, some potential for some like bluish green here. Uh, he's got the 65 range, the really good speed, line drive hitter. We love that. Uh, so we call them up. Uh, and because he was he was really good in Triple A, as you can see here, two war, 160 WRC plus, uh, solid walk and strikeout rates here. Babip is a bit high, obviously, but he comes up and he's gotten a decent sample size, basically the same sample size he had in AAA, and he's been bad. Uh, you know, the war is, is 0.1, which is not great, but he's getting his first taste of the big leagues here. We're not going to, like, 
move off of Mike Broyhill. We still think he's a decent piece to have, uh, but right now he is uh, not performing. He's playing right field for us, uh, and things are just not going well with him in right field. I think we saw we had we, we had Parker Meadows when I talked about him last episode, uh, but Parker Meadows has been playing center field for us. He's got the four ZR. Probably not a guy we're going to bring back because he's projected. I mean, it's only two point four million. Oh, this is Calabrese. I'm looking at uh, Meadows three point eight million. Probably not going to bring back three point eight million for this type of production where he's got a sixty WRC plus. Uh, the seventy five range is obviously solid. Really, really good, even, but uh, you know things are things are not going well for Parker Meadows here in our lineup, and then Calabrese has been uh, a better bat than Meadows has, but the glove has been like okay-ish, uh, and he is still getting a decent amount of time in center field where we've got like Calabrese every fourth game, uh, and then he's starting against lefties with every fourth game with Meadows, so they're getting like a decent amount of time in center. The outfield situation is a mess right now, basically. Uh, is what I'm trying to say. And our team is built around, like, our catcher, who's having a down year, Shanuel, who's still tearing things up. Uh, but, you know, it's just it's basically just him and then Soto, who we picked up in the offseason. And those three guys just haven't been enough this season. And Neto having a down year is, is, not, is not great. Lombard, like I said, has been solid. I mean, you'll take this, the 105 WRC+, plus, 18 doubles, 12 home runs. A very, like, Jordan Westberg-type season, I would say. Uh, except he ha he's like treading water at uh, at third base. He's not putting up like a great defensive season, but he's fine. Uh, Lombard's not, th not the problem. It's just we don't have any like needle movers right now. So I think heading into the offseason, we're definitely going to have to revamp the lineup, do a little bit revamp the pitching staff, uh, and we're just going to we're gonna have to improve some things. I feel like I've skimped on some stuff that we're going to need to improve. We're going to have to get uh, maybe rely on some dudes in the system, uh, not that the system is very deep right now, as it's making everybody's face gen. Uh, but, like, a lot of dudes we have are dudes who are in, like, the lower minors, as you can see here. Like, Chris Sands, he is recovering from his torn flexor tendon. Hopefully, he is back for us next season, because he is a guy we expect to be uh, good for us. Obviously, it's a bummer that he got hurt, but he's still, right now, a top 100 prospect. Uh, and he was trending to be in our rotation this season before he got hurt. But uh, right now, things did, did they, he got hurt, and that did, that kind of threw a wrench in things. We had this Amari Collar guy we just took in this class. He has been really good in A ball through seven starts. As you can see, he is just absolutely destroying low A here. Honestly, to the point where for the rest of the season, I'll probably just put him in high A, even though that doesn't really make too much of a difference. But we're going to put him there. That's what dudes in real life, that's teams in real life do, I feel like. They use low A as sort of like what short season used to be, and then they kind of like aggressively get guys to high A. Uh, and then we got some dudes in like rookie ball. Uh, we got Brulehart here, who is in high A doing his thing. We can honestly probably move him to uh, triple or double A. Yeah, I think we're going to put Brulehart here in double A for the rest of the season. See how he does. He's gotten plenty of ABs in A ball here. Just a little, uh, little run through some of the prospects just to see some guys that we could possibly rely on here. Chris Sweet is somebody we took in the 18th round. He's fragile. He's put up uh, a couple like decent seasons in the minor leagues for us, but he is like not like a dude, dude. He's just kind of like possibly like a multi inning reliever sort of guy, I would say. With this type, I mean, the control, if that develops, that is definitely a, a game changer for him. But it's it's still, he's not going to be great, great. Uh, so, like, we don't have, our, our, our system is still not great, is what I should be saying. Uh, Eric Rose is here in AA, putting up really good numbers. We honestly might call him up straight from AA once we make some moves uh, here in the next week or so. Because he is a guy who looks like he could perform the major leagues, has a bunch of growth potential here. He's been good in AA. Uh, you know, he expects to be playing in the major leagues, and he is a guy who uh, we could just use. We could see what he is for us, get him up in the big leagues, and I'm not opposed to calling guys left straight from double A because I'm kind of trying to avoid getting our top pitching prospects in triple A to avoid that Salt Lake City Pacific Coast League absolute grinder it is that that league is. They can just grind down pitchers. Uh, and then, of course, we have Sadid Matthews, who is in double-A right now. I did not think he was a white guy. Uh, just just saying, 
doesn't seem like a white guy name, but uh, 65 range here. He's been a good player for us. He's developing. Let's get another scout on him. Uh, he started the year... Oh, no, he got hurt. That's what it was. He was in last year in high A, putting up a two war. He's been solid enough in double A in, like, limited time this year because he's been hurt. Uh, yeah, he had, like, elbow tendonitis, and then he had a torn thumb ligament for three weeks, and he's missed a bunch of time in double A, so we haven't really gotten to see the development we want from Sadid Matthews this year. And then even last year, he fractured his foot, so luckily he's not fragile, but uh, he's kind of had a bit of a bit of bit of a rough road here the past couple seasons, as we'd like to see some more playing time before we get him up in the big leagues here. Uh, but he is definitely a guy we could be looking at here soonish because we do need some outfield to be like some legit dudes for us. And Sidney Matthews is among those guys we have in the system. Uh, and I think that's really it. Or we got like uh, not Bobby Camp. We literally just took him. Uh, Juan Padilla is a guy who also should be in double A here. Let's do that right now. Boom, he's in Rocket City. Uh, Juan Padilla is a guy we took in the third round in 2027, which is right now looking like a decent draft class for us. Uh, he's 21, almost 22, putting up decent numbers back-to-back -back years in A ball, in uh, low A, and then here in the high A. He's been like... He's been like league average. We're putting him in double A here. See how he does. He's got a decent glove. He's never going to be a shortstop, but he is. He could be a really solid third baseman, second baseman type. Maybe not second base because of the torn double play or the turn, torn, torn double play, turn double play, but he can definitely be a uh, solid third baseman here with the 60 arm, the 70 range, and the 60 infield range. Uh, we want to tap into this power, so he's probably a guy that we're going to throw in the development lab this offseason, try to tap into this power, get some more of that, uh, because that is that is going to be uh, something that he relies on. We need to get this power up. We can, He cannot be a 35 power guy playing like third base for us. That's just not something that can happen, but if that develops, Juan Padilla could be an interesting option for us. I should also mention a guy who's super far away from the big leagues, but I should mention him because he is a part of the uh, All-Star Prospects game here. Uh, he is our lone member here. Uh, Nelson Arango, who was an international free agent signing for us in 2029. He is 17, uh, not doing well in rookie ball uh, because the game just kind of auto-promoted him to uh, the, the DSL this, this year. And he has been not good but uh, he is a guy who is interesting. He's a switch hitter. We signed him literally just in uh, this this year in 2029. Uh, and he is an interesting player, high work ethic, high intelligence. We'll see if he's somebody someday. But we have a few guys like this who we signed in the system. I don't usually like to go over these guys too often or because, you know, they're just so far away and they're just so incredibly, like, like they're they bust out like 95 percent of the time or i shouldn't say bust out they should they do not pan out bust out would be like oh he actually works out uh but i guess get bust i don't know it could be either way uh but anyways these guys just don't really work out like ever but he is a guy up there in rookie ball for us like this guy as well was a guy for us He's been good in rookie ball this year he might end up in full season next year depending on how he looks uh that's a bit iffy so maybe maybe not he might repeat rookie next year but yeah we've got dudes like that and then we got like Aquino, who was our first round pick this season who is not looking too good to start his career but he is you know still quite young he is a top 100 prospect here so uh we actually have the 17th prospect ranking or the 17th minor league system which is good we used to be like 24th i think before this season so uh getting some respect there climbing the rankings climbing the rankings love to see that and i know i've basically just gone over and like done like a whole overview of the system here but uh, I felt like these things were all worth mentioning uh, before here as we kind of just like finish up the season and see how things go. I also completely forgot to mention Spencer Strider here is currently on our IL because he was just still sitting in free agency after the draft. So we went out and signed him to a two-year deal. So we have him for the rest of this year uh, at 7.5. It's just, you know, we're... That's fine. We're just having on the roster. We're basically just paying so we can ensure that he's on next year's team at 8.5 once he comes back from his torn rotator cuff. 
Uh, I think that is an interesting bet that Spencer Strider is going to come back. You know, he might be wrecked. He might still be fragile. But at 8.5, I feel like that is a decent bet to have on next year's rotation. Even if he's not in the rotation, who knows? Maybe he could be like an insane sort of multi-inning reliever sort of guy for us. Uh, Spencer Strider... He is on our roster, just spending the rest of the year on the IL. So we'll, we'll we'll keep tabs on him, see how he's going, see how his rehab is going and everything like that. And uh, we will check back in on him uh, at some point in the offseason and uh, next year. So I was fully planning on just doing all the trade deadline, getting to the end of the year, and then just cutting back in and updating you guys on everything that happened, and then kind of just moving quickly into the offseason for next episode. But our Los Angeles Angels here have started putting something together. Uh, as you can see, we are currently sitting at 72 and 74. We're not going to win the division. The Mariners are basically running away with that. I mean, they are running away with the division. But we are not totally out of it when it comes to the wild card. Now, obviously, we have a couple teams in front of us here. The White Sox have that third wild card spot at least i think so because i think there's th gonna be three al east teams that are making it yeah so three al east teams are projected to make the playoffs and that and two of them being in the top two wild card spots so if we take a look at here uh uh yeah so the three the three wild card teams yankees orioles white Sox, tigers twins they're all very close here, and then we are one and a half games behind for that third spot because these kind, these two teams are a half game out. You can see here the Tigers are spurting. We're spurting a little bit, not not doing too well, but we were do, playing very well. If we uh, go to our uh, schedule here, you can see we, we got off to a rough start in September here. We, uh, we won this series in, uh, against Seattle, but then we, we got... We got swept in a two-game set with L.A., lost this set to Texas. Or no, we split this set with Texas. Then we beat Minnesota. So we had this little interesting stretch here where things did not go well. But August, August is, we'll, we'll start things off in July. So July, I think we picked things up like right around here was where we left off. Uh, so we come out in the second half, lose to Oakland, win the series, and we win the last two. Then we lose to Seattle. Then we split a four-game set with Oakland, and then we come out in August, and it's a uh, series win over the Rockies, sweep of the Mets. We lose a series to the Yankees, but then we win a series over Washington. We win a series over to, uh, Toronto. We lose a series to Atlanta, but then we sweep the Royals. We split a four-game set with Toronto. We sweep Detroit, and then we head into September. So right now... Things are looking interesting. The bats are improving a little bit. We're up the tide for sixth for runs. I believe we were like tenth last time I looked at this. Uh, so things are things are looking up. We're hitting more home runs. We're still walking a ton. We're striking out a little bit more, but we're we're walking a ton still, stealing bases, hitting more home runs, uh, scoring a little bit more runs. So the offense is getting a little bit more juice. You can see here we were nineteen and nine in August, six and six in September so far. Uh, and then the pitching has been still solid, I would say. We're still giving up too many walks, still giving up a little bit too many home runs, but the rest of this stuff is solid. The hits, the opponent's average, the Babbitt, that's still really good. The, the defense is still really good. The bullpen's still really good. And we're sixth in runs allowed, which is not the worst, but it's not, the, the, it's not awful either. I mean, it's not the best, but it's not awful either. Uh, and let's just uh, take a look. Well, first of all, we should be taking a look at what what we've what moves we've made. So we go right here where we left off. Brandon Woodruff, we put him on the IL, and we called up Patrick Forbes back up to the big leagues. Uh, and then we made some moves where we we called up like Josh Johnson because he was a guy who was absolutely tearing the cover off the ball in Double A for us. I mean, at an absurd rate. We called him up to Double A. He was basically doing the same thing. We called him up to the big leagues, played four games, boom, torn ACL. So Josh Johnson has not been a part of our uh, of our run here late in the season, but that is what happened. Uh, we called up Jordan Grosjean's for a bit. He didn't really work out. We had Colby Allard. We optioned him back down. 
Uh, and then here's the first trade we made. We traded Parker Meadows because we claimed him off waivers. You know, he's got the 75 range. I was like, we're not going to bring him back because he's projected to make like 3.4 in arbitration. So I was figuring like, hey, who out there would be interested in Parker Meadows? And the Royals here were like, he's been awful for them, first of all. This is the first time seeing this. But uh, the Royals were like, hey, we're interested in Parker Meadows. Uh, and we would be interested in giving you, I even did the multiplayer package and they offered at first, it was this guy, Fulton Lockhart, who was, it was him and LeBaron Johnson, former UT or lever, or I think it was a starter at UT, uh, but flamethrower guy, LeBaron Johnson, I believe is how you say his name, LeBaron. Uh, I know who he is. One of those guys where I, I know the names, but I've never actually heard it pronounced out loud enough to like register in my brain. But anyways, uh, him and Lockhart were in it. And then it was also Clark Schmidt who they have, who was just kind of like a throw in and he's wrecked. And I was like, okay, what if I can get like a decent, like triple a bat sort of guy. So we picked up Nick Kurtz, who's uh, raking in rake, wake forest in real life. Uh, he was the Cubs first round pick in 2014, as you can see here, ended up on Kansas City, and then we picked him up as this three player deal here. Uh, and then a little bit later on, we decided to trade Reed Detmers. This is literally the next day. So Reed Detmers and then a guy who we signed to like a minor league deal who was just in like a ball for us is just kind of like a minor league depth guy to play some defense. We threw him on the deal, and also this this throw on was also just like a total nobody in the Royals deal. So back to the uh, Tigers deal here. So read Detmers to the Tigers. Uh, Detmers was on a deal where he had a 10.7 this year, and then a team option for 10.7. Now Detmers was quite solid for us. He's been really good for Detroit too, uh, but. You know, the 10.7, I wasn't sure if I was going to bring him back or not. And they offered Sawyer Gibson Long. I was shopping him around. I was doing single-player offers. I was doing multiplayer offers. I was doing prospect packages. And the Tigers were offering me a lot of interesting guys. So I was like, Sawyer Gibson Long here, he is basically like another... Uh, how I view him is like a Detmer's replacement, where it's like he's only making 4.4 this year. Uh, as you can see, he's been like league average-ish for us, and he was basically the same in Detroit. He wasn't like great, but he's had like decent, solid years with Detroit in his time. So I was like, okay, that's basically what Detmers was for me. So we're viewing him as like a Detmers replacement who is cheaper, because as you can see here, he's a Detmers is ten point. What was it? Ten point seven. He's four point four this year, and then seven point three next year. So I view him as a, as a Detmers replacement, but he's cheaper. That was why you picked him up. And then I was also like, hey, uh, what if you guys throw in like this decent reliever you have in AAA who you're not using, uh, and he has one more option year. He he's doesn't even have a full year of major league service yet. They just had him kind of in AAA doing nothing. He's just recently called up with the, with the September call ups for us, so he has a very small sample size. As you can see, he pitched twelve games, thirteen innings in Salt Lake. So we added him on the deal, and then we also added on Gavin Turley here, who was he's fragile, which is not great, but he's a seventy range center fielder, high loyalty, low uh, financial ambition. He has low leader, low work ethic, which isn't the greatest, but he's got the good range, good speed, interesting bat profile where he's got some decent power or gap power potential, the fifty power, the fifty five to sixty I, the Babips higher than the Avoid K, which we like. Uh, and he's just an interesting piece where he could be a center fielder for us. He's up right now. He's played 20 plate appearances, seven games, five starts. He's tearing the cover off the ball in those games, but it's been a very limited sample size. You can see here he was also absolutely destroying AAA. Uh, and he never really did much with Detroit uh, the past couple seasons when they had him up for like a cup of coffee. Uh, but he has done stuff in the minor leagues. You can see here in AA in 2027, five-war season, three-war season in 2028 in AAA with Toledo. So Gavin Turley, I thought he was an interesting piece to add on. Oregon State guy, what is his uh, backstory? He was uh, a 19th round, that, that, that's at a high school, so 19th round pick to Arizona. Uh, and then 2025, he was the first round pick for Detroit. So yeah, he's been in Detroit this whole time. We traded for him. He's up in the big leagues for us right now. Those were the only two trades we made. I also looked into doing a trade for Jose Soriano. Just really couldn't find anything that I thought was good. I also saw a lot of people offering for Ben Joyce 
and I just couldn't find anything that I wanted. I, I thought about it. I was like, you know, he's having his first actual good season for us. It took him forever to do that. Maybe this is just a fluke. So maybe we can sell high on him. Sort of like Detmers, where Detmers is having like a solid season. So I was like, oh, we'll sell high on him too. Uh, but Joyce being you know, a much more like Detmers has had good seasons. Joyce is kind of just having this like out of nowhere, like actually finally good for us. But anyways, I just couldn't really find anything for him. So we opted to not sign him. Uh, but here the team is, the team is doing well. We take a look at the lineups here. It's Soto, Ohapi, Lombard in the three hole, Shanuel, Neto, Didawick, DeJesus in right, Broyhill in center, and Kyron Paris at short. Uh, if we go ahead and sort by WRC plus here, Shanuel still, still doing his thing. Juan Soto is doing his thing. Zach Neto has rebounded. He's got his WRC plus up to a 1-1-3. And... He's playing a solid second base for us. It is about damn time, Zach Neto. Love to see that. Mike Broyhill has started turning things around. This was quite low, but he's on fire right now. Uh, if we take a look at his splits month by month in the major leagues, uh, yeah, you can see May barely played, June, not great, July, not great, August, September. He's on fire. Mike Broyhill doing his thing. Uh, we've got Nick Kurtz on the bench right now. This is his stats are he hasn't. Well, he, yeah, he's done a little bit here, uh, but he was also like a bench piece for Kansas City, hitting ten home runs, eight doubles. That's what he is for us. He's a bench piece. He's like a he's the main pinch hitter, backup first baseman, DH type guy. Just an interesting bat to have on the bench for us with a decent bat of power and eye. Got uh, going there. Uh, Bo Naylor is decent as backup catcher. Didowick's kind of cooled off a bit, so as Lombard. De Jesus though, has been up and down. He was quite bad if we go by splits month to month with him. Uh, June, July, he was not looking good. And then August and September, been really solid. Really solid for De Jesus. So he's starting to turn things around as well, right as Didowick is, is struggling. And same with Lombard. Gavin Turley, we went over him. He's just barely played for us. Bob Moores is still a backup. And then Logan Ohapi has been the disappointing one where he's just not doing well. I mean, he is falling off here, folks. 88 WRC+. plus. We take a look at his splits month by month. Gets off to a decent start in April and May. Horrible June. Treading water in July. Horrible August. Horrible September so far. So now that I'm seeing this, we might honestly move around this lineup a little bit. So where we go, like maybe Shanuel. I keep calling him Shanuel because he's one, another one of those names where I don't hear his name pronounced often enough to like have it in my brain register. And I've never actually gone in my way to be like, oh, how do you pronounce it? But I've heard people say Shanuel or should, I'm pretty sure it's Shanuel. Now I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm like in my head. But anyways, no one Shanuel. Shanuel? Is that what? No, it's Shanuel. Uh, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, we're calling him no one Shanuel. I'm sure I'll look it up. Maybe I'll correct it. But uh, I think we might move around the lineups a little bit here. So, like, if we take a look at the OBP, um, yeah, we want, like, our top three guys here. If we go to WRC+, Plus, these are our top three guys. So maybe, like, I don't think Broyhill's got the eye to be a leadoff guy. But he is on fire. So we might move him up and go, like, maybe... Neto in the three hole, Shanuel in the no. Neto in the three hole, Shanuel four, Ohapi two. I mean, I just it's he's Logan Ohapi. You got it. You got to roll with Logan Ohapi. So I think we're still gonna go. Uh, Soto, Ohapi, Neto, Shanuel. I think we're gonna swap Didawick and Broyhill for now. We might even swap De Jesus and Lombard for now, possibly. How has Lombard been? Is he like up and down? Okay, so he's he's just having really bad September, but he's been basically league average. We'll mm, Yeah, we'll leave that the way it is. Uh and yeah, I think that's how we'll do that. We'll swap these guys. Uh, Broyhill and Didawick, boom. So I think that's what we're going to rock with for the lineups from this point on. But we're we're trying to see how things are going to go here the rest of the season. So let's just kind of go 
like day by day and see how things go here as we are trying to uh, make the playoffs here. So a little, little three-game set in, in or at home against the Astros going on here uh, with an off day in between here. So that, that is good. So Mackenzie Gore going game one here. Let's see how it goes. Boom, 7-1 win. Love to see that. Now we have, uh, who is in the bump for us? It's Gallon going for us. Love to see that. He's on fire. Uh, we will go back to the info. I'm all over the place. Here we go. Uh, game two, Zach Gallon. Boom, 11-3 win. Can we get the sweep? We can indeed. Beautiful. Gallon goes six, shuts it down. Th a three-inning save from Palpum coming over, doing his thing. Bunch of hits, bunch of runs. I mean, just a beautiful, beautiful game. Shanuel homers, uh, doubles from De uh, Lombard, DeJesus, Soto, Broyhill, doing their things. Uh, and then in game three, winning extras here. Uh, player of the game, Daniel Cuvet. That's from Miami. I think that's how you say his name. One of those names. I, I don't know, but I do know him. He's on uh, Miami. He's like their best player because as I'm recording this, it is Tuesday after Memorial Day. So the selection show for the NCAA uh, attorney was just yesterday. Uh, so, you know, stop putting in so many SEC teams. Florida should not be in. Teams getting robbed out there. You know how it is. We got to represent the, the cold weather states. Northeastern. Stuff like that, you know, should be getting in there. But anyways, uh, so yeah, sweep of the Astros. Now we got a series here at home against Chicago, uh, the White Sox. Can we get that? Mm, dropping the first one, not great. We do win the second one, and now Woodruff, mm, I was not expecting him to be uh, eligible the rest of this season. Uh, we're going to throw him on a rehab assignment for now. And just let him work on some stuff, get get reacclimated, because he is coming back from like a two month injury. We won't, we won't just want to throw him in here. Uh, we'll see how he does. Let's go back to the schedule here. So let's uh, let's win the series. Who do we have going? We got Patrick Forbes, who is back up in the five spot. He's limited to eighteen batters faced. How has he been since I've called him back up? I haven't really looked. Splits, MLB. Boom! Look at this! He's been solid since we called him back up. Here in August, you know, the ERA is not great, but the fit minus, you, you'll take that. And then here in September, he's got three starts just doing the damn thing out here. Patrick Forbes doing doing what we want here. We, yeah, three straight starts of, of five, four and two-thirds, four and two-thirds, one uh, no runs, one run, one run, no runs in the uh, start before that, too. I mean, Patrick Forbes is on a heater here, folks. He's doing his thing. Uh, so let's go back to the schedule and let's see what happens here. Ah, oh, one nothing loss. We get one hit and Ohapi's the only hit? Oh my God, by the string bean, Noah Schultz. Man, incredible mustache. He does not have that in real life, I don't think. <laughs> I'm I'm fairly certain, but I mean he's he's been a great starter for them, and he is uh, a little bit of a down year in the ERA this year, but uh, you know he's still very solid. And he, obviously, he just one hit us, shut us out. Uh, he didn't go the full nine, but you know their their team. I mean, we couldn't. Oh my god, this pisses me off. Their their closer comes in and get and gets three walks, three walks, and we can't tack on a run. That's that's brutal. We drop game three like that. Uh, let's do a standings check here. All right, we're two and a half games out, but we've, we've taken over the Tigers spot. So we're two and a half games out of that final wildcard spot. We And it's the White Sox, of course. The team that just beat us. That was a huge series. And we just lost two, two, two out of three to that White Sox team. Classic. So now we got Houston, but we have another series against the White Sox here after an off day, and then we close the season off against Texas. So let's just see how things go against Houston. Boom, 
big bounce back win who was who was throwing for us zach gallon doing what he does seven inning strong only gives up one we let up a bunch of their relievers here shanuel gets player of the game i mean you'll love to see it Edie's leonard he's back up with us he hit a home run his first home run of the season shanuel homer de jesus homered i mean we love to see it folks we love to see it uh so game two here let's see how it goes Boom! 11-5. Just like that. Junior Marino, who we traded to Chicago, is now in Houston. He was a part of the... Uh, the Alan Serta trade, which has been like a disaster for us because none of these guys have developed into anything. Serta was going to be the main piece in it. He hasn't been good. Melendez, he's retired now. Uh, Zavala has him a good. He was actually up for us with a little for a little bit, and he was just so bad that I just couldn't keep playing him. Uh, and of course, it does that. But anyways, he was a part of that deal, and then he gets traded to Houston, uh, and now he's on their team. But anyways, we take the first two of this four game set. Can we take game three? We can indeed. That's the series winning. And Nelson Rada's back. I was not expecting that either. Let's uh, throw him on a rehab assignment, too, because I don't know what we're going to do. We're, we're rocking and rolling right now. I don't want to mess with stuff because it wasn't like Rada was doing good for us. So we're going to throw him on a rehab assignment. He's fragile now. That's not good. We might look to trade him in the offseason entirely because of this. Uh, but yeah. But anyways, let's get back here to the schedule. Can we sweep the Astros in a four-game set? We can indeed. Not great. Fulton Lockhart here, mild shoulder strain, out for a week. He's been good for us. I f a week. Uh, I mean, we do have a bunch of guys. We have a bunch of guys here in the bullpen here because we, we, we had two extra guys in the, in the bullpen rather than another backup uh, uh, hitter when it came to expansion here. So... What is Woodruff looking like? Woodruff is getting shelled in AAA. I don't think Woodruff's the guy anymore. Uh, he's also exhausted, so it wouldn't really help us right now to call him up. But uh, I think we're just going to, like, monitor Lockhart here. We're going to, like, give him, like, a like a, a not... Because I don't want to throw him on a 15. I'll, I'll give him, like, a day-by-day -day thing here. For now, we'll give him five... And we'll check in in like two days and see what this set says. Oh, let's just do this. Boom, that gets through that day. We have an off day. Boom, still one week. So we'll just bump that up to like five again. And we'll see how the Chicago series goes as we've got expand or wild cards here. Boom, this is a huge series. White Sox in that third wild card spot. We're rocking and rolling. We're eight and two in our last ten. They're seven and three in our last ten. We've won four in a row. They've won two in a row. We need to win this series straight up. That's just what it is. That's the reality of the series. We need to win it. They're throwing Schultz, Braxton Garrett, and Bryce Elder. That's that's uh, that's a decent uh, decent. But Braxton Garrett's not great. But Elder and Schultz have been really good for them. We've got Forbes, who's on fire. Then presumably it's going to go to Gallon, who's on fire. And then it'll probably be, like, Gibson Long or Senga. It'll probably be Senga. I'm cool with that. Uh, so let's go to Info tab here. Booms, we're on the schedule. See how it goes. Game one. We drop it in extras. Another one nothing lost to Noah Schultz. Five-hit game for each of us. It's nothing-nothing the whole way through. And then they tack on one in the 10th. Who was it? Who was it? I don't have the write-ups or anything because I have this stuff disabled. Uh, was it an error or something? I don't know. It doesn't matter. All I know is we lost one nothing. It's probably right there, and I'm just missing it. But uh, we, we need to win the next two. We got Gallon on the hill. At least I think that was Forbes. Yeah, it was Forbes. Forge. I mean, we, we, we had him nothing the whole game. And then, uh, and then Lopez blows it. 
just couldn't get it done. But uh, yeah, so let's go back to the schedule here. We, we got to win these last two. We just have to. Bryce Elder, Zach Gallen, game two. Oh, we dropped that. And now Lockhart's having a setback. Oh, my God. Not great. Not great. Oh, my God. Uh, well, we'll leave him on there. But what are what is the, uh, the standings looking at right now? So, yeah, we're three games back. Things are not looking good. Things are not looking good. We we need some help. We need to win this third game, and then we need to like sweep Texas, and we need the White Sox to start cooling off, which they're eight and two. They're on a four game heater. Uh, well, let's just see how it goes. You know, game three, we get swept. Literally the, the worst thing that could happen. We get swept. We just can't beat the White Sox, and the. I'm just it's just it's just now hitting me it's the White Sox it's just now hitting me if you go back to the offseason video and I mentioned that the White Sox haunted me in my Royals sim I had going here they are again here they are again just haunting me three games set with Texas here We've been eliminated. We don't have a chance. We're out of it. The White Sox have clinched the playoffs. We get swept. So that's we we're we're out of it. That's that's what it is, folks. That's what it is. And watch. I'm I'm just gonna watch this real quick. We're gonna sim through these three games and we're gonna sweep Texas. There it is. There's one. Our pitching coach in in A ball has retired. That's fine. Whatever. Go to the schedule. Game two here. Can we can we advance it here? Okay, we got the we got the month save. Yes, the monthly save. As I take a sip of water. Let's uh let's see it here, folks. Boom, 15-1 shellacking. Where was this against the White Sox? Where was it? Where was this against the White Sox? So we go back to the schedule. We got our last game of the season. What did I say? What did I say? We sweep Texas. Did I just say Juan Soto 30-30 season? I'm, I'm fairly sure it did. I mean... I mean, a fun year. A fun year with, with making that, that run. Uh, Shanuel here, player of the month, or batter of the month in uh, in September... Ends with a five war, 156 WRC plus, 38 bombs, 24 doubles. Not quite 40 like he had back-to-back -back seasons, but he's still insane player for us. And as I mentioned here, not even making 20 mil a year because we signed him real early on to that, and he has developed quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, Nolan Shanuel, just insane. But just, I mean, you can't, you can't help but be disappointed. I mean, if we could have just had a little bit better of a first half here, we we could have been in the playoffs, but we couldn't get it done against the White Sox because the White Sox just fucking haunt me. I hate the White Sox. God damn it. Ugh. But anyways, uh, team stats page here. We finished fifth in runs scored. We go 19-9 and in August, 16-11 and in September, but it's not good enough because we started off so bad. We had this awful April, decent May, awful June, not great July, and that's really what killed us. If we could have just had a little bit better of April, you know, even if this is just like, you know, instead of we make this uh, 11 and 16, this is, you know, 13 and 12, boom, we're a playoff team. Just like that. It just, it just comes down to that little amount of games. And uh, we just can't get it done. But fifth and run scored, walking a ton, offense sort of turning around in the second half, the pitching staff, Ended up being good. The defense. Like I said, I like to hang my hat on pitching and defense in this game. And uh, we, I feel like we did pretty well in that in that category this season. As we take a look, sort by war here. Zach Gallen puts up a 4 war, a 7 R war, 140 WRC plus, 80 fit minus. I mean, just a great season. Averaging 102 pitches a game. He's a workhorse, folks. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. 
He's pitched 200 innings since 2023. 220 innings since 2025. I mean, he's insane, folks. Zach Gallon, he's he's the goddamn workhorse. This is why we signed him. Lowest bad up in the league. That's what happens. You know, you got a good defense behind him. Great. Love to see it. Zach Gallon doing his thing uh, in that ace role for us. Kodai Senga, not the greatest, but he was fine. Uh, Sawyer Gibson Long was uh, pretty solid, very similar, very, very similar both uh, between us and Detroit, but he's never been like an ace. He's just like a solid 3-4 guy, and that's what we picked him up for. Uh, ben Joyce was fine in his stopper role, puts up 120 innings in the stopper role. I know Sporer is loving that. Uh, I mean, just incredible, just incredible. Leads the league in appearances. Jose Lopez was good for us once again. Uh, this guy has once again just turned into a, a out of nowhere solid arm for us. Uh, a little bit, a little bit too many meltdowns, but the win, the 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 win, the win probability added is still positive, so we'll take that. Uh, Soriano or no, Fulton Lockhart. He was a Rule Five pick for Kansas City, uh, and he was good between us and them. Love to see that. Uh, Soriana was good. Healy was good. Ashby was even good. He moved into the rotation as a follower for us. If we split this major leagues or no major leagues as a starter, you can see here, he got three starts. Uh, that's, uh, I guess he was always a reliever, but as a reliever, great, great stuff. Uh, but he was a follower here down the stretch for us. Limited to 18 batters face. So was Patrick Forbes. He was lighting things up down the stretch as well. Love to see that as he got off to that really bad start, but he started to turn things around. So I'm loving what we're seeing there from Forbes. Uh, definitely makes me think that he could continue to be a part of our rotation next season. Uh, LeBaron Johnson was fine in our bullpen. I think he was a little bit better for us than he was KC. Yeah, basically the same ERA plus, but he uh, had a better fit minus. And he had a much better K minus walk. A little bit, little bit too many walks. I'll, I'll say that. But he has the forty control. You expect that with him. That's why he's not a starter. He expects to be a starter. He could be a starter. But you, you know, the control limits him. So he's a reliever. He is what he is. And we've got him for plenty of uh, time here because he, he only has a year and thirty two days of service time. Same with Fulton Lockhart and exactly a year because he was a Rule Five guy. Uh, Aaron Ashby is not going to come back, though. He was even a guy I thought about trading at the deadline because I was like, you know, teams were interested in him. And I was like, how much does he want? And he's like, he's like, yo, pay me like I'm a legit starter. And I'm like, we're not doing that. But somebody will. Somebody will uh, will pay Aaron Ashby next year because of this, this run he had with us as a follower. Maybe Tampa. Go to Tampa. Do your thing. But, uh, yeah, Eric Rose came up 14 and two-thirds innings. He was fine. Really good FIP, actually. Not great ERA, got the BABIP, yeah. The BABIP killed him. I mean, a anything that was in play was basically a hit for him. But, I mean, the, sh the K percentage, great. The K minus walk percentage, we'll take that. It's in the 20s. Uh, Cole Palpum, he came over and he was solid. You know, we'll take that. He's another guy who's going to have plenty of team control here, not even a full year of Major League Service. Uh, and then Walbert Urena came up too as a reliever, and he was not great. Uh, he was really good in AAA in their rotation, so I, he was one of the September call-ups, and he was not great for us. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. He's not like a like a key piece. He's just sort of like a, a decent guy we have in the system here. And then we take a look at the bats. Sort by war here. Bunch of dudes. Shanuel, 5 war. Soto, 4.4 war, 130 WRC+, plus, 30 home runs for Shanuel and Soto. Soto goes 30 home runs and 39 swipe bags. Neto just barely misses out. Oh, no, I was looking at his doubles. 17 home runs, 28 swipe bags for Neto. Plus, he puts up the 6.2 ZR at second base. Love to see it. Hate to see this. Hate that. But love to see that he put up a good season for us. For War will take that. He's He's been a consistently good player for us. Uh, Logan O'Hoppy finishes with an exactly league average WRC+. Plus, 20 doubles, 26 home runs, or 22 doubles. Uh, you know, not quite what we're used to from O'Hoppy, but he wasn't he wasn't the worst. He wasn't awful. He did his thing. Uh, hopefully he can bounce back and have more of a Logan O'Hoppy season next year because we need him to do that. Uh, Mike Broyhill was a, was a great 
great little breakout for us here with the 65 gap power, the avoid K. Uh, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't strike out. He's got some pop to his bat. He hits a bunch of doubles with the gap power. He's an interesting piece. And then plus, plus, he's a positive ZR center fielder. You know, he's not the, the uh, 70 range, actually. This was 65. That's up to 70. We take a look at the scouting here. Uh, looks like it hasn't updated here, I don't think. I'm not seeing it unless I'm just stupid. Maybe this was it. Current defensive rating center field goes from 55 to 60. Yeah, maybe that was it. But yeah, he's a 70 range now. Uh, so yeah, Mike Broyhill, legit piece for us. Picked him up in that uh, that Seattle trade along with George Lombard, who also put up a decent season to war for us. Slightly below average WRC+, plus, but we'll take the 20 doubles, the 20 home runs, uh, 94 ribbies for him, too, in that five-hole the majority of the year. He was in the three-hole, too, for a bunch. We'll take that. George Lombard, Kyron Paris, a little bit of a, definitely a down year. Uh, he's a guy who, I'm, who I might look to trade in the offseason. You know, we signed into that deal. Very tradable deal. Uh, if we can get the right piece for him, and then find a guy who can play shortstop, maybe even trade him for a guy who can play shortstop or like a package. But he's somebody I might look to trade in the offseason just because he's, aside from the the great year where, you know, 2027, that goes down in Angels history. Uh, he You can't take that away from Kyron Paris. He was, what was he, the ALCS MVP that year? Yes, he was. Uh, and he's a leader. You know, if, if I can find the right piece for him, we might move him in the offseason. But we might bring him back. We'll we'll see how it is because he he's kind of not been ideal, you know. I I'd, I'd, I'd prefer somebody a little bit better at shortstop for us, somebody we can rely on. Because right now our team is basically built around first base, DH, and like a bat first catcher. We don't really have like the stud center fielder, the stud shortstop like you would want ideally. Uh, maybe Broyhill's that. In center field, but I don't think we have to address center field because we've got some dudes who can play there. But shortstop is definitely something that we might have to address here in the offseason. Uh, and then Gavin Tur or, uh, Bob Moore was a decent backup for us. Gavin Turley was a decent uh, backup for us as well. He put up uh, a decent, a really good WRC plus in 34 plate appearances. Just a tiny sip of coffee in the in big leagues here, but he's another 70 range guy. Like I said, we, we've got a bunch of guys who can play center field for us. He's among them. We've still got Calabrese. He's dead in AAA because we wanted to see what Turley was going to give us. Uh, and Calabrese started struggling as well. Uh, Bo Naylor actually gave us a really good backup catcher season. Finally, we've had all these guys with like single digit and negative WRC pluses. Bo Naylor comes in here and he's just like, yeah, I'm decent. That's what we wanted, man. And, uh, you know... He's going to be compensation eligible. So, uh, or no, he might even be, no, he's not. He is a free agent after con. Yeah. So he's a free agent. Probably not going to bring him back because we do have some catchers down in AAA to give you a little, quick little look here. Uh, Kevin Hawks, who we traded for from the Cubs, uh, wasn't great in AAA, but he's got that 70 blocking, the 70 framing, the 80 avoid K, not going to strike out a lot. He's going to give you some really good defense. He's an interesting piece to have there as the backup uh, catcher. Uh, and then we also have Dave Peter, who split this year between AA and AAA. Was really good in AA. Cooled off a bit in AAA here. But he's an interesting guy. He had 19 home runs in AA. Uh, let's give him a little scouting report here update. But he's another 70 framing guy. He's got the decent eye. 60 potential on that. Never going to be a great guy, but he's a switch hitter. Switch hitter. He's got the eye. He's got the 70 framing. Interesting backup catcher piece. He was a sixth-round pick for us in 2027 out of the very nasty university. Uh, so, yeah, we got some options down in the minor leagues. We even got somebody like Ryan Campos, who probably not the ideal catcher, but he is somebody who's just holding down double-A for us. Uh, probably uh, not a great defender, so maybe maybe hold on to a bit much here. But, you know, I like I like keeping guys who aren't a detriment to the minor leagues, you know. If they want to hang around until they're 27 playing in double A, do that, you know. Help the guys develop, you know. Give us a decent piece down there. But anyways, back to the uh, big league roster here. Edie's Leonard came up. He put up a League average WRC plus is like a bench piece. He was also playing like every fourth game and right and left, just depending on whoever was going to slot in that day, basically. 
Um, did a wick, cooled off towards the end, but he did put up 17 home runs. I think if we go to his splits here, yeah. September uh, was not great, but he did have a really good August, uh, and then July was okay. But he was hitting home runs for us. Another guy who didn't have any doubles but hit 17 home runs. Sort of same thing with DeJesus, 17 home runs. Those were our corner guys down the stretch, and I feel like that helped. You know, These guys hitting more home runs than we were getting from those spots, I feel like that definitely helped. Uh, where Didawick was good when he first came up, kind of cooled off. DeJesus was bad when he first came up. And then he heated up towards the end of the year. You could see September and August were really his best months. Uh, and then Nick Kurtz was fine as a backup, a uh, backup bench piece. You know, he was fine. He was a backup. Uh, he was bad for us. He was fine for them. Uh, but he barely played. He was literally just basically pinch hitting as like a decent power eye option off the bench. But yeah, that's how the that's how the boys did this year. Feel like it was a solid season. We uh we you know disappointed that we couldn't. I, I shouldn't say it was a solid season. Very disappointed that we couldn't make it. We could have just you know played better against the damn White Sox, or just had a better April or something, and we would have easily gotten in. And even if we got in and got swept first round, I feel like that would have been a success because after the past two seasons we had where we were really bad, we're we're just trying to get back, man. We're trying to get back to the playoffs here. Uh, and obviously that's going to be a goal in the offseason is get this team ready for the 2030 playoffs. And I might possibly realign. I might possibly realign for 2030. We'll have to see. Uh, I might add in two expansion teams too and realign. Might do the Royals thing where I was doing where it was uh, all like geographical based. We'll see. I might keep it. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, that is something that I've, I've thought about doing. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it is. Oh, just a quick little rundown through here for some of the MLB stats. Nolan Shanuel, top five in RBI. Him and Soto, top in OBP. Soto with the best OBP in the league. Love to see that. That's three straight seasons for him where he leads the league in OBP. Uh, led the league in runs, too, as our leadoff guy. Huge part of our offense turning it around was Soto just banking in those runs, getting on base, getting driven in, driven in by Shanuel. That was the offense there, folks. Uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, Soto led the league in runs. He was even second in the AL in stolen bases. Or no. He led the league in stolen bases at age 30 with 25 speed. Just picking his spots. Love to see that. Love to see that. I didn't even realize that when I looked at his page before. Uh, Lombard getting caught too much. Don't like to see that. You know, he had 11, he gets 50. Yeah, figure that out, Lombard. What are you doing? And then 166 counting walks. 166. Look how much higher he is than everybody else. I mean, he's, he's absurd. Juan Soto, folks. The guy is incredible. Up there in uh, win probability as well. Shanuel up there in OPS+. Plus. Take a look at the pitching side of things. Uh, dude, I, I feel like they, they, they have... They have dudes coming out of nowhere in this sim. This guy was number one overall pick. 20. Oh, I remember looking at this guy. I remember looking at this guy and going, this guy's going to be a stud for them. And he, he what do you know he was? He <laughs> Rookie here goes in high A, shoves. They're just like, let's see what you can do in triple A. He wasn't great. And they're like, we don't even care. You're going to go to the big leagues. And he's just, boom, lead the NL in war, lead the NL in FIP, minus, have the high, lowest DRA, strike out a bunch of guys, have this profile, Extreme ground ball. I mean, this guy is is peak. He's a cold weather Illinois guy. He went to UT. You could you could work on that. But uh, you know, ideal player here. I mean, that's just insane. St. Louis. They got Corbin Burns up there too, putting up decent numbers or really solid numbers. At age thirty four, almost thirty five. St. Louis. They're pretty good, folks. They're pretty good in this in this sim. Uh, innings pitched though. Zach Gallon. We knew that led the league. Uh, led the league in complete games in this era where it's like two, you get two of them and boom, you lead the league. Uh, most walks, Kodai Seng up there in the top five. Got to work on that. I've even got him on this thing where he's, you know, he's not, he's not pitching around. He's only got 45 control and it's like, it's not the worst. It's not the worst control, <laughs> but, uh, you know, walked a ton of guys. So that definitely hurt him. 
uh so hopefully he can you know probably not going to work on it at age 37 or whatever but you know hopefully we can uh we can tack that down a little tiny bit next season and then we had two guys in the top five for babbitt the most shutdowns was ben joyce taking a look at his page here yeah i guess they don't give you the, the red text there for for shutdowns but yeah 40 shutdowns i mean he was great led the league in appearances in the 120 innings out of the bullpen I mean, it's, it's what you want there. you got to maximize the relievers. And then a quick little tidbit on this guy who was leading it. Oh, first of all, you got Vance Honeycutt, who I, I've, I've said he was the guy that we were like, we missed out on by one pick for William Schmidt. Where, where we took William Schmidt and Vance Honeycutt went one pick before us, who has that 75 range, and he's turned into quite a stud in center field. Which, uh, you know, we got Broy Hill now. We had Calabrese for a little bit was okay. Uh, but Honeycutt... He's like a legit gold glove center fielder. Uh, and also this guy, uh, Fabian Lopez, bringing him up because a couple years ago when I was also thinking about we needed to get a better sh like defensive shortstop, they had him on the Rule 5 draft at like age 22. And I was just like, there's no way a guy like this would be on the Rule 5 draft. He had 75 range. This was all the same at the time. No chance a guy would like this would be on the Rule 5 draft. So I just was like, we're just not going to take him because that's unrealistic. Uh, like I said, I tried to limit my guys to limit on the Rule 5 draft and the waivers. If they're if they're 25, that's where I'll be like, okay, I'll claim them then. But if they're under 25, I'll be like, not probably not happening, you know. So he was a guy that I thought was interesting on there, but we didn't claim him. But, and of course, he's turned into an absolutely absurd at second base, they're, they're playing this guy at second base. Who's their shortstop? We got to find this out. Let's go uh, standings here. Uh, Marlins, Marlins. They were really bad. Maybe if they played him at shortstop, they'd be better. Oh, they got Ian Happ. They got Ian Happ. But uh, they got Silas Aldoal as their catcher. As their catcher. Uh, he was fine. Uh, yeah, they're shortstop. Okay, so they got a 70 range guy at shortstop. What was his ZR? Okay, so they've just, they've just got absurd up the middle defense in the infield. Who's their center fielder? Bubba Thompson? Okay, so they got some solid up the middle defense, but, uh, classic, classic Miami. Oh, yeah, <laughs> classic Miami, classic. That's just, no, no. Never changes, never changes. That would be an interesting sim. Maybe next year's OTP game, we do the Marlins. That'd be interesting. Try to actually get them some uh, some hitting. Well, this is just this is just not good. Spencer Strider here, folks. The man we just signed to a two year deal so he could come back just got a setback from his torn rotator cuff, and now he's basically guaranteed to be wrecked when he comes back. Uh, and he's he's he still has seven months. That was, I don't know what it was before, but he just went, he just, he had a setback, folks. He's had two setbacks on this. Oh my God. I didn't even realize this was 2027. I guess I did. I did. I did know that. But, uh, I mean, that's, that's not great. So, you know, this, this might be wasted. Might be wasted, folks. But, uh. I, I still felt like it was worth a shot. You know, maybe I could have waited to the offseason, but I just felt like it was too good to pass up having this potentially on our team at the, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, at, at, at the, like, you know, 8 million that he was asking for for next season. And I didn't want to take the chance that he was going to go into free agency and then somebody was going to hike up the price in like a bidding war and then the Yankees were to come in and be like, hey, we'll give him 15 mil. And I'm like, ah, yeah, okay, I'll back off. We have ourselves a World Series champion in seven games. The Boston Red Sox take out the Arizona Diamondbacks and win the 2029 World Series. Congratulations to them. Big thing here. They take out the White Sox in the Battle of the Sox and the White Sox still haunting the Royals, even in this universe. Fuck the White Sox. But anyways, the Red Sox do win it all. Arizona takes out Atlanta in the LCS. Red Sox take out the Yankees in the LCS. Uh, we take a look at this Red Sox team. We know Kyle Teal has been an absolute stud for them. 
uh, mainly with the with mainly with the defense the past couple seasons, but he's still really good uh, catcher. Also, classic New Jersey guy who goes to uh, Virginia. I feel like they're always getting New Jersey guys. Them and Louisville are always and UNC always stealing Jersey guys. Jersey's best prospects in baseball that is and then in, in football it's more of a mixed bag but still always getting stolen pick it up shiano but uh yeah rafaela he's their second baseman hasn't been great but he put up a decent season for them. let's just go uh it's a quick little sort through here on lineups marcelo meyer mvp type year as their shortstop what do you expect 57 two baggers for marcelo who's this jp jones guy First round pick in 2027, comes up, first full full taste of the big leagues here. He's another guy who went basically straight from A ball with a 12 war. What? 60 runs. <laughs> and this guy comes up to the big leagues and he's just like, yeah, I'm incredible. Holy shnikes. JP Jones, 23 years old, Mountain Vernon, New York. Central Alabama Community College out of out of fucking nowhere this guy is. JP Jitters Jones. Uh Roman Anthony's a stud for them. We talked about Teal. They got Cody Bellinger, Rafaela, Miguel Blyce is their center fielder. Is Blyce or Blaze? Blyze? Something like that. I know who he is. One of those names, once again. Uh Sean Bouchard, we tried to trade for that one season. They got Colton Kazer. Remember, they traded for him. He's never been great for them. But he does get a ring. He gets a ring. And then they're pitching. Shota Imanaga was their ace. I mean, he's been a stud in this series. I had him with Kansas City in my save for a bit, too. Uh, but he's been an absolute stud. Led the American League in war and fit minus. Incredible year. Kyler, Kyle Bradish is a part of this team. Luke Little. Uh, not putting up Cy Young numbers like he was that one year, but Luke Little still decent enough, really good fit minus, gets his ring. Severino on the Red Sox now getting a ring. Not great pitching. It seems like this team was much more of a bats than pitching. Yes, they just basically kicked the shit out of teams, winning a lot of like 12 to 8 sort of games. Uh, but the Boston Red Sox, they do win the World Series.